If you were around for the Endwalker lead-up, you've seen this video before. However, an update for Dawn Trail is warranted. Many new players have never prepared for a new expansion still, so what kind of things might they need to do in order to be ready for it? This will be a very thorough video, including some spoilers of some dungeon names. So pull out your calendar and get ready for a lot of things you can prepare that will let you get a head start on either your main or your brand new Viper and Pictomancer. If you find this helpful, please do check out my links or subscribe, or even check out my Patreon. I would like to start with a bit of a disclaimer though. There is absolutely no rush to the endgame. Final Fantasy XIV is a game about the journey, not the destination. So while this video is going to be showing you a way to skip a pretty sizable portion of the leveling process for one of the new jobs, this is because I know a lot of people want to play them for the new story content. You do not have to do any of this. Go through it at your pace, especially when learning a new job is part of it. This video is mainly focused on getting Viper and Pictomancer prepared and a good starting boost for them. This can instead be used on your main job, but you're likely to hit 91 before finding the level 91 dungeon. Viper and Pictomancer will start at 80, and need a bit of EXP before they can start doing Endwalker leveling dungeons. At the end will be a few extra notes, but the vast majority of video time will be on how to get a big head start on one of the new jobs. Start farming Poetics if you haven't already, and buy a full set of level 80 Crypt Lurker gear for both scouting and casters. You can even make gear sets for them prematurely. Throw in any leftover grade 8 material you have as well. If you have the pre-order bonus Azema Earrings, you need less Poetics, but still a large amount to buy it all. Then, cap out your Poetics to 2000. This is for weapons, as those are only available once Dawn Trail launches. Each level 80 weapon is 600 Poetics, but we do not know what the cost of the level 90 weapons will be. All level 90 tombstone gear will be converted to Poetics for their cost. Currently, you need 500 comedy tomes, down from 1000 for previous expansions on content tombstones, to buy a weapon. With Poetics being as easy to obtain as they are, this may increase to 600 or be left at 500 and the tombstone item requirement removed as normal. It may even be a lower cost than that. Worst case scenario, you will need an extra 400 Poetics beyond the 2000 cap in order to buy level 90 weapons for Viper and Pictomancer. So spend your Poetics as soon as the expansion drops to make room for more. You will be able to convert extra causality and comedy tomes into Poetics in Mordona. It will be at a very low rate, 4 tomes for 1 Poetic. So if you can get the upgrade tokens to turn them into item level 660 pieces, spend the comedy before the expansion. Buying with Poetics, they will come pre-upgraded to 660. Otherwise, it's at least a good idea to get as best gear you can for getting right into Dawn Trail story and content. If you've not been gearing up scouting and casting with level 90 gear already, we've had several months too, then it's a bit too late to be fully maxed out on item level before the expansion drops. Get as close as you can. If you're still only gearing up your main, then be sure to farm up as many tombstones as you are able without putting yourself into a risk of burnout. Luckily, you're capped at 900 per week anyway, so you're limited in your farm. If you want to be an overachiever with gearing up, go start farming Vanaspati, Catesis Hyperborea, and the Atia Scope for their specific drops for Viper and Pictomancer. That last one is only accessories though. Remember, job gear is an old Charlian. Every extra bit of stats you can get does make you stronger if even the tiniest amount and Vanaspati is when dungeon gear starts to be stronger than level 80 tombstones gear. If you've somehow not finished the story of Endwalker yet, well, maybe go do that too. Going forward, I will be showing pictures with EXP amounts. This is what they currently look like. Endwalker gave us an EXP squish, and we are likely to see the same thing happen with Dawn Trail. Exact numbers change, but the percentage of a level the EXP is worth remains the same. June 18th is two weeks before the official launch of Dawn Trail. On this day, or sometime this week, you will pick up a Wondrous Tales book from Chloe, and complete it. If you do not have it unlocked, the unlock is a blue quest very close by in Idleshire itself. Again, complete the book, but do not hand it in. Our goal is to simply get 9 stickers and spend a little to no second chance points. Regardless of how many lines we get, you gain those by doing duties with new players to that duty, so try to go into Dawn Trail with a capped out at 9. 
On June 28th, when early access begins, you will hand it in on whatever job you wish to give the EXP to. Be that your main, or for a head start on Viper or Pictomancer. This system works on a weekly reset, but books last for two weeks. So because you turned in the book for the previous week, you can now pick up a new book for this week. Depending on how you want to handle it, you can speed run this second book by spending your second chance points to retry an extreme fight over and over. Clear out whatever easy task you can on your main, then spam the same one minute long extreme over and over to hit nine stickers. Turn that one in on whatever you want the EXP on, and you just got an entire level's head start. Each book is worth half a level of EXP, so two books is a full one. Finally, when the official launch of July 2nd rolls around, you can get a third book and take your time with it. June 25th is our final full day of play before the servers go down for 48 hour maintenance. If you want to prepare as much as possible, this will be an extremely important day for the challenge log. Within maybe 30 minutes of logging in, you can hit nearly level 82 on Viper or Pictomancer by combining your first Wondrous Tales book with Challenge Lock EXP from 7 specific challenges. Add in the second book, and it's guaranteed. First we have Feeling Lucky. Doing any three dungeon-based roulettes will complete this challenge. So do two dungeon roulettes, and then stop. Second, there is Dungeon Master for doing five dungeons. After completing your two roulettes, do dungeons without using roulettes. This will get you to four out of five. Third, we have You're the Hester Round 2. To cut down on doing boring guild hest grinding, especially with how many people might be doing this method, ignore the first level of this for the more lucrative second level. Do nine guild hests, and then stop. Under the Armor is the easiest option for this, but guild hest roulette might give you faster cues. Fourth, we have Exercising the Right giving out five commendations. In those four dungeon runs you do, give people commendations. If you forget to, do it during a guild hest spam. Just make sure you only give four. Between the dungeons and guild hests, you have 13 chances to give commendations. From this point on, avoid doing any duties on this day, lest you accidentally ruin your challenge log prep. If you do any duties that won't mess with the log, just make sure you don't commend anyone. Not that you were going to. I find that many people don't bother to give them out normally. Then when you log in on Friday, you can do a guild hest, a leveling roulette, and commend any random player. This will shoot your EXP up immensely. If you have a pre-made party grinding group, maybe two of your friends are going to be leveling a tank and healer in Dawn Trail, leaving two DPS slots open, you can first all do a guild hest separately in order to give out commendations. Then group up to make use of a limited leveling roulette. Click the gear icon in the duty finder and turn it on. This will ensure you get a Shadowbringers leveling dungeon instead of, say, Sestasha. This way the roulette is worth more. This was not all of our challenges though. We have a few more worth preparing. Fifth is In Your Fate 1 and 2. They are worth the same amount of EXP, so just do four fates. Then you can even get the second one later, maybe just from doing random fates in Dawn Trail areas. If you have Blue Mage, this should go extremely quick, but it is optional. I recommend Central Shroud, Central Thanalan, Middle Lenosha, and Lower Lenosha for the easiest possible fates. Sixth and seventh are leave-based, and the hardest to both understand and explain. Complete 20 leaves is obvious, but leave plates is less so. The plate refers to this icon, and every leave has one of these icons. It signifies the type of the leave you are about to do. There are many options for getting both of these prepared, but I have a preferred method for this. You can also slightly adjust this part for getting the EXP onto your Disciples of Hand and Land, but those level much faster than the combat jobs. Step 1 is go to the Leave Meet in East Shroud. She's right next to the Hawthorne Hut Etherite. She should have four battle leaves available, all four with unique leave plates. Accept all of these, complete them, but do not hand them in afterward. Save these for later. If you do not have leaves unlocked here, quickly unlock them from the Leaves of Hawthorne Hut quest. This quest should have no effect on our preparations. Step 2 is craft your leaves over in Gridania. Even if you do not have one, you can simply go unlock Carpenter from the guild. No actual crafting is needed. Once again, if you do not have leaves unlocked here, complete the quest Leaves of Bent Branch from the Leave Me. 
There are two leaves we care about here, In With The New and Touch and Heal. Both of these you can buy the items for in the market area. Buy eight of each item for a total of 16. We will do each leave eight times for a total of 16 turn-ins. So you should have 16 leaves turned in, one leave plate, and four battle leaves sitting in your journal, completed but not turned in. When you turn these four leaves in, this will complete both challenges at once. As a result, the only work to do when you log in on patch day is talk to this leave meat for a burst of EXP. Safest thing to do once you have everything ready is to just log off. There definitely is a lot of stuff available you can still do, but what if you accidentally complete one of your challenges? The only guaranteed safe stuff you can do is your crafter and gatherer stuff, as long as you never do any leaves. Besides, you're probably going to be hitting Dawn Trail hard, a break will do you good. Though there is one final thing you could do to prepare. Go to your squadron and do the mission for 10 EXP vouchers. These are 2 hour long level 3 FC buffs, so if your FC is not rich enough to have constant level 3 heat of battle running, you can just grab these and use them anytime you go to do a dungeon. Or when you're spamming dungeons for grinding Viper, Picto, or any other job after the story is done. Let's do a quick run through for getting your EXP. I'm going to assume you're doing Viper or Pictomancer, but again, this can all go to a main job. If you're doing it on the new jobs, be sure to log off where the quests start. We haven't been told the exact spots yet, so keep an eye out for when they're revealed. When you log in on June 28th, pick up the job quest and complete it. Put on your job and immediately queue for Guildhest Roulette. The roulette will give you more options and will give you a higher chance of finding any people who are actually queuing on tanks and healers instead of either new DPS. Or maybe get a tank and healer friend to do it for you. While you're in there, be sure to use your commendation on any random person you get. If you're stuck waiting for queues and it doesn't look like getting a guild hest will be impossible, go and do your job quest in the meantime, up until the tutorial solo duty. You can do the duty after the guild hest, can also set up your gear set proper, do your hotbars, and maybe even set up your portrait. Worst comes to worst, you can leave your job quest where it is at, and go take care of other tasks. We have your weapons you can buy in Yulmore, and is good to do before you end up earning any more poetics as established. You will have a full gear set of I-530 for both Viper and Pictomancer if you've prepared the rest of the gear already. Remember you can trade in tomes at Mordona, and the Wondrous Tales book is going to give you some. Still waiting in queue? Go turn in the leaves sitting in your journal. Maybe an easy fate to kill will be right next to you too. If none nearby, go to one of the easy areas of your choosing. If guild has still seems like it's not gonna happen, you can skip to leveling roulette and maybe try again later. Even with two new DPS jobs, leveling roulette is much more likely to have tanks and healers in them. This should be enough to get you to level 81 before the next turn in. Though this is the first time since Stormblood that we got two new DPS instead of at least one non-DPS, so there's no way to know how queues will be. Head to Idleshire and turn in your first Wondrous Tales book. You'll be allowed to immediately grab a new one. When you're not in queue, swap to your main and clear out this book. If you've saved up your second chance points, you'll be able to clear out a bunch of easy stuff before having to spam retry on the same duty over and over for the rest of your stickers. Turn in that one, and both books will have you at 81 alone. Between all of the challenges, you'll hit 82 in no time. If you want to try and get even just a little bit more EXP that is pretty easy, do the Arcasoda Tribal Quests in Thavnair. This will be a low stakes test of any hotbar setup too, even lower stakes than the job quest. To sum all that up, your checklist on launch day is Unlock the jobs, do their quests, obtain their weapons with poetics, and make sure hotbars are set. Leveling and guild has roulette if both will pop. Commend any player in either of these duties. Turn in your stored leave quests. Do any one fate. Turn in two wondrous tales books. And if absolutely desperate, Arcasota daily tribe quests. With all this done, you should be close to, if not outright, level 82. From there, normal leveling methods apply. You may need to dungeon spam with trusts, though. If you don't have a tank or heal a carry, queues are gonna be really filled with vipers and pictomancers. You still need to do the roulette for that extra challenge or two, but beyond that you're not forced to wait in queues. Let me finish off this section with a warning. Please also make sure you learn your toolkit 
before jumping into leveling roulette. It's one thing to expect you to be a viper or a pictomancer master right out of the gate, but having no idea what your buttons do when you get an endwalker duty, or really any decently leveled duty, that's kind of awful. It doesn't matter if people undervalue DPS, a good DPS makes a duty go very smooth. So maybe take some time on a striking dummy too. Even if you really want to get to Dawn Trail Story as soon as possible on your new job, please at least make a little bit of effort. While we're waiting for the 48 hour maintenance to finish, you can maybe even study the official job guides on the lodestone. Often people will make custom hotbar creators for the new jobs based off of media tour info. You can spend the time the game is down learning your new job, ready to put it into practice the moment you log in. Worst case scenario, this trusts, well, duty support, for every story dungeon in the game. You have an option to get practice in lower level duties without worrying about disappointing other players. That covers the main leveling prep, but there's a bunch of other things we could do to prepare for the expansion that is more in between, but more leaning toward battle side mostly. First off, PvP. You could do some PvP with Viper and Pictomancer as they likely will come with their PvP toolkits too. The reason this is here though, is capping out on Wolf Marks and Trophy Crystal. Or at least earning a lot in the meantime. One of the things I said you could do for waiting for Roulette is setting up portraits, right? Well, there's Framer Kits to buy here. You can buy the Framer Kits for Viper and Pictomancer, assuming those are going to be there. However, this is not a guarantee. They might only come later, and you might do frontlines every day for the fun of it and earn the currency normally. We also have Bicolor Gemstones. If you've been putting it off, you can go grind for any of the old rewards you skipped out on, or just cap to be able to easily buy some of the new rewards from the Dawn Trail Zones. Chat box is going to be extremely important to turn off. At least turn off Shout Chat in all of your chat filters. People like to spoil stuff in Shout Chat. Beware of this and turn off Shout Chat before you become a victim of spoilers. Yes, actually, some people are that much of an asshole to do that. They're less likely to use Yell, but you can turn off Yell too. Then finally, we have Crafters and Gatherers. If you do not care about a head start on battle jobs, you should, they're way harder to level, then you can use those Leave challenges for them. There's also a bunch of Gatherer and Crafter based challenges. At the very least, I would recommend the Gatherer challenges. Prepare these as best you can, and when you get to the new areas, swap to a gatherer and gather just one item for some quick EXP. If you don't speedrun the story, the challenge log will reset before you start grinding them out anyway, so it's a nice little boost. Is there anything you would personally recommend preparing ahead of time? Anything you think I missed? Be sure to leave a comment! Like I said at the start, this was mostly a rehash of the Endwalker one, but with some things changed truncated, or improved for any potential people who don't know all of this. At the very least, it's a reminder for those of you who do know. Thank you all for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, check out all my socials, and maybe consider joining my Patreon to support me in making more guides and videos. Thank you to all my patrons, and get ready for a lot of work on Dawn Trail guides. Take care, and may the power of Anne and Anidhogsley waste to your enemies.